I'm so glad you're here. Before we get started, I just want to mention that uh, our Advent devotional begins this Sunday, November 29th, the beginning of Advent. And the best way to make sure you don't miss uh, an episode is just text the word become to the number 56525, and I'll see you then. Now, I want to say happy Thanksgiving. But what a strange, what an unprecedented Thanksgiving. With COVID, infection, there's going to be fewer gatherings this year. They will be smaller gatherings. Some people won't show up at all. Some families have conflict over how to respond to COVID. Maybe there's people that are not coming to have Thanksgiving with you. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe actually this is going to be like the best Thanksgiving you've ever had. But probably not. Uh, for lots of us, this is a difficult one. There'll be empty chairs and the thought may occur. Maybe we just should skip Thanksgiving altogether. But I'm not going that direction. And the reason is because actually in life, when things are at their worst, gratitude matters the most. It's an odd thing in life. Often afflicted people are more grateful than affluent people. Thanksgiving and suffering actually often go together. Thanksgiving was first made a national holiday in 1863 by Abraham Lincoln in the depths of the Civil War. Not long after Lincoln had lost his own beloved son, Willie, to death as a boy. And Lincoln wrote in that proclamation that we are so surrounded by divine blessings that we are, profound, we are prone to forget the source from which they come. And so that's what we do today. We stop to remember the source of the gift. Now, our teacher in this, of course, as in everything, is Jesus, who was also the master of gratitude and, in fact, launched a revolution in gratitude, although this is often not known. Peter Lightheart writes about this in his book, Gratitude and Intellectual History. He says, in the ancient world generally, Rome in particular, gratitude was very important, but it was also quite restricted and very strategic. The idea was a rich person gives you some money and you owe him a debt of gratitude. You got to find a way to work it off. You work for him, you serve him, you give him your time or your energy, uh, you praise him, you applaud him when he's on his way to one of the public Roman baths. And uh, so gratitude was actually a way to prop up a system of human honor and wealth, and it was quite restricted. Now, Jesus brought from Israel a much different understanding that gratitude is our response to a God who is so good and so generous that he gives us gifts every moment of our lives. Jesus' brother James put it like this, every good and perfect gift comes from above from the Father of all lights, in whom there is no shadow of change. Every breath I take, every beat of my heart, every moment of time, every one of my possessions, every morsel of food, every time my mind works, I'm around, that's a gift, that's a gift, that's a gift. We are so surrounded by them that we are prone to forget the source from which they come. So today we remember. Today, we thank. Now, how do we do this? I'll tell you a thought that has meant a lot to me over this last year, and it comes from Dallas Willard in his book, Divine Conspiracy. He talks about the little expression, what does it mean to stop and smell the roses? Now, this is something that we do with our whole selves. He says it means to bring uh, the rose before our mind and our senses and to linger and to look, and to smell. And when we do that, we delight, and we're filled with gratitude. It doesn't come as something that we're entitled to. I didn't earn that a rose smells like this. It's just a gift. And he says, taking time to smell the roses can leave a lasting impression of a dear glory that, if sufficiently engaged, can change the quality of a life. He says, the rose itself in a special way, but all flowers, even in the most humble form, bear irrepressible witness to a larger world where the good is somehow safe. Beauty, like the beauty of a rose, is goodness made manifest to the senses 
And the rose bears witness that there is a larger world where the good is somehow safe. And that's why gratitude matters, especially even when life is difficult, because it bears witness that there is a larger world, my Father's world. And he is the Father of all lights. And every good and perfect gift comes from him. But we are prone to forget the source from which they come. So today, we remember today, stop and smell the roses. Just pause and give thanks. That will very often begin with people. And I will think of you. I think I know everybody who's part of this little community. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do this particular devotional was just to say thank you. I don't think that Nancy and I would have made it through this last year if it were not for so many of you. I know I won't mention names because some of you want to keep a very low profile in the social media world. But uh, in my mind right now, I just go through face after face and name after name and moment after moment. And I'm so grateful for you. Uh, it might be being thankful for place. I think about my home, Rockford, Illinois, when I was growing up. And I'm so grateful for Rockford. And then I think about moving out to California so many years ago, and I'm so grateful for California. I'm grateful I moved from Rockford to California and not the other way around. We're grateful for memories. I remember the Thanksgiving when my little brother Bart pushed a button and turned off my Uncle Mac's furnace, and Uncle Mac and his family didn't know until they woke up at 1 o'clock in the morning, and they were all freezing to death. I'm grateful for song. Uh, we had a little church service last Sunday. A couple of you were a part of that. And one of the people who was on an elderly person who's got lots of memory problems right now. But there's an old song, and often music stays in our memory longer than almost anything else. And in this church service, I just played a recording of that song. There's a little old church in the wildwood. Come to the church in the veil. And uh, I watched as her lips sang the words to that old song in a mind that can't remember much else, could remember that, could be grateful for that. I was so moved I could hardly talk at all. And then when we were almost done with that service, somebody said, I've got something I'd like prayer for. And, and then somebody else said that, and we prayed for each other. And I was reminded of what a gift it is to get to bear burdens with each other and pray for each other. Now, that's part of what I'm hoping to do with this little community as we're going through Advent together. So I want to invite you, if you do have anything that you would like prayer for, I would love to do that. I would love to know. And you can just put that in the comments, and we can do that for each other. We can hold each other up. Mostly today, mostly when we stop with whatever the gift is, we remember the source. We connect the dots back to heaven, back to the Father of all lights, the giver of every good and perfect gift. And we thank Jesus. We bring him, like this rose, before our minds, and we linger there with him until we delight and we give thanks. So today, remember the source. And I will see you on Sunday for the Advent series Unprecedented when I tell you why that is the title and what the purpose of that journey will be. See you then.